Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams yet again. I'm running a little bit late today. I need to run out the door to go to volleyball in about 15 minutes, but I needed to film this first so that I can have a video for tomorrow because I don't want to skip and Wednesdays are a long busy day and I didn't want to wait till tomorrow night. Yada, yada, yada. It doesn't matter. Here I am filming and this is a video idea that was given to me. I kind of mentioned at the end of one of my most recent videos asking if you guys had any ideas of things you wanted to see as we're moving towards the end of Vlogmas. Someone said, what about anticipated books for 2020? Do I have any? And so I thought, hey, that's a great idea. Let me talk about that in a video. Here I am talking about books that I am looking forward to in 2020. Now, some of you may recognize that I don't read a lot of current new release books. I read a ton of backlist. The majority of books on my shelves is backlist because I buy the majority of my books secondhand. I am not up to date on what is coming out, what is current. I don't uh, use NetGalley anymore as a way to find out about what's coming up. I don't request ARCs as often as I maybe would like to every once in a while, but there are a few books that are on my radar. I won't even say that they're necessarily anticipated releases. I'm not like holding my breath for most of these. I had to look up like what is coming out in 2020. So they're not books that I was necessarily looking for except for the first two that I'll talk about. The other three I found today as I was kind of scouring different sites and lists on Goodreads about what's coming up in 2020. However, there is one that I'm very excited for. I thought it was coming out in 2019. It didn't. Then it was going to come out in March of 2020. And now the current release date is August. So I still have to wait another seven months for the third book in the Morgan Crow series by Jessica Townsend. It's called Hollowpox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow. It is the third book following Nevermore and Wondersmith, both of which I absolutely loved. It's a middle grade fantasy series. I have no clue how many books are going to be in the series. All I know is I'm highly anticipating the third book in that series and I'm not going to run out and buy it. I don't actually own the first two, but I will be on the waiting list at the library. I want to read that book very shortly after it comes out. I'm so excited. If you haven't yet read Nevermore or Wondersmith and you want something that's just fun, like Harry Potter was fun, get in on the Nevermore train by Jessica Townsend. That one again comes out in Holopox, comes out in August of 2020. Very much looking forward to that. The second one that I want to talk about is one that I also knew was coming and it's going to be called, I didn't know the name of it until today, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And it is a Hunger Games prequel by Suzanne Collins. It's coming out in May of 2020 and I'm really excited for this one as well. I am definitely one who really enjoyed the Hunger Games trilogy. I read it back when I was reading a lot more YA. I'm not reading as much YA anymore. I still do read a bit. I'm not opposed to it whatsoever and I'm definitely very interested in reading this prequel, finding out hopefully a little bit about how did this world become the way that it is with the separate districts and how each district gets like as it gets further from the capital the economy gets worse and worse and worse um how did the capital kind of gain all of its power i don't know i'm just very curious about this world and uh, learning more about how it came to be hopefully that's what we're going to find out in this book so i'm really looking forward to that one that's be the ballad of songbirds and snakes by suzanne collins coming out in may of 2020. Now the next three I just found out about today, but I'm very excited about them. The first one is also a sequel. It is Mallory by Josh Mallerman. This is the sequel to Bird Box, guys. Oh, I didn't know this was happening. Bird Box was such a fun read for me and totally out of my comfort zone. It's a horror, classified as a horror book. Um, some of you may have seen the movie adaptation that came out this, this past year. It's fantastic. It's a super short little book and it's so good. And it kind of left like not on a cliffhanger. It didn't leave on a cliffhanger. It ended satisfactorily, I should say. But there were still so many questions in my mind. Like what happens now? Yeah, I can't say what happens at the end of Bird Box, but like, yeah, it left me with a lot of questions still. Even though it had a relatively satisfactory ending, I still have questions and so I'm hoping that Mallory, which does come out in May as well of 2020, 
I'm, I'm hoping that Mallory answers some questions. So Mallory is the name of the main character in Bird Box. So hopefully we're going to find out where she goes from here. So that's all I'll say. And the kids, like what happens to the kids? I want to know. All right. The fourth book that I'm going to talk about today is Codename Helene, and this is by Ariel Lahan, and this comes out in March of 2020. So I think on this list, this is the first one that comes out. I read I Was Anastasia in 2019, really enjoyed it in 2019. I read it this year, not that long ago, just a few months ago. It was one that did take me a little bit to kind of get into because of the structure of the book. Not because I didn't enjoy the story of the book, but because of the structure it was just different than what I was used to. It took me a hot minute to get into it. So I'm curious about what the structure is going to be for Codename Helene. But in this one, it's um, it's based on a real life story. The first sentence on Goodreads of the description says, based on the thrilling real life story of socialite spy Nancy Wake. It kind of had me at socialite spy. I'm down for that. It is going to be... Um, a World War II historical fiction, which some people are totally burnt out on World War II historical fiction. And honestly, I say that it's one of my favorite genres, but I don't think I read that much of it in 2019. So I'm still down for more of it. I have like a shelf that's like way up at the top of this shelf where I try to keep of the majority of my World War II historical fiction and it's full. It's a pretty full shelf, <laughs> but I am definitely always drawn to that era of historical fiction. Um, it just also says it features the astonishing woman who killed a Nazi with her bare hands and went on to become one of the most decorated women in World War II. So we have interweaving timelines, four code names that Nancy used during the war, a story of enduring love, remarkable sacrifice, unfaltering resolve that chronicles the true exploits of a woman who deserves to be a household name. I'm down. She smuggles people and documents across borders. She, yeah ends up killing somebody with her bare hands was a part of the French resistance. I love stories of women during war because every role is important. Um, and I just think that this one sounds like a lot of fun because she's going to do a lot of different things and it's based on a true story. It sounds fantastic. So that is Codename Helene by Ariel Lahan comes out on March 31st, 2020. The fifth and last one that I'm going to talk about today is called The Orphan Collector, and it's by Ellen Marie Wiseman. I've also only read one book by Ellen Marie Wiseman, and it was The Life She Was Given. I really enjoyed that book. Really enjoyed it. That was a strong recommendation from Sarah, from Sarah's Nightstand, um, and others, but Sarah loves that book, and so I had to read it because of that. Things about this book that sounded really interesting to me. We were in 1918 in America, in Pennsylvania, I believe, Philadelphia area. We follow a young 13-year-old girl whose parents are either missing or dead or gone. Orphan is in the title. Orphan in the title is a buzzword for me. Um, she has brothers. We don't know what happens to them. She goes out to go groceries or something and comes back and they're gone. She is a German immigrant. It takes place post-World War I. We have the Spanish flu as a part of the backdrop and the setting going on. She has to kind of fend for herself in a way. We also follow another woman named Bernice whose baby died just days ago. And she is like in the midst of deep grief and loss. Um, and I think she does something that she might later regret, but was trying to keep that truth hidden. And it involves Pia and her family, I'm sure of it. So I'm very excited for this book. I really enjoyed the writing style of Ellen Marie Wiseman. So I'm really looking forward to this one. And it comes out in July of 2020. So that, guys, is five books that I'm looking forward to in 2020. I don't normally pay much attention to what's coming out. So if you have a book that you're really looking forward to next year, let me know in the comments below. I will put it on my radar. I might add it to my to read list on Goodreads. I'm always interested in hearing what other people are looking forward to. I love watching anticipated release or like anticipated releases videos, but I also like to let the hype die down a bit. I like to let other people read the current releases as much as I can handle waiting on most of them and then see what the kind of general feel is for a book. If it's really polarizing, sometimes I want to read it just to see where I land. If almost everybody is liking it, it sometimes makes me feel like I'm going to be that one person that doesn't like it. I don't know. I just like to kind of see what other people think before I dive into new releases. And I don't have the time to spend requesting a lot of new releases on NetGalley or with other publishers. So I'm not up to date. I don't know. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Are you excited about any of these five? Do you know of any other ones that you're really looking forward to in 2020? Let's chat down in the comments below. You know I love talking to you down there. 
I need to go get ready for volleyball. I'll talk to you in another video tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.